Fuzzy TV. I realized uh, yesterday when I was watching my own show that Romans 11 is not a boring topic. I was excited watching it. And I'm sure you were too. And I would really like to continue on with it today. But I can't because I have a couple of rants that I need to get out. I have like an opening rant. And then I have like the main rant. You know, like big rock groups, they'll have an opening act. You know, like you have Aerosmith. And the opening act will be, you know, Joe Dinglehofer and his Merry Trumpeters. Well, yeah, I'm one of those. Kind of like the undercard of a big heavyweight match. So I got two rants. One, I warm up to the other one. Um, oh, yeah, you're wondering what's going on back here. My sister got me an awesome birthday present. I got a box today, uh, and I opened it up, and this is the birthday present my sister got me. Let me take you on a little tour of the gifts. It'll be worth it, I think. I gotta show you the great birthday presents my sister got me. I got a care package from Canton, Ohio. Look at this. We got uh, two bottles of uh, Jameson triple distilled uh, Irish whiskey. Some of the best, I love it. A four pack of Southern Comfort. Nothing like those Southerners know how to comfort you. There it is. <laughs> Yes, and what you see back here before we get to this other here. This is uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company, BB, Beyond Black. These are patriots, baby, American patriots. They know how to make coffee. I've actually never had it, but I've heard that it is badass. And look at this, Jose Cuervo. This is ready to drink margarita mix. Ready to drink. Hmm. Might have to test that theory. And look at this, look at this, Nordic Berries. You may ask, what are Nordic berries? I ask the same thing when I lifted this out of the box. They are little gummy, chewy vitamins that Kelly says she eats like candy. Well, I get it. I totally get it. And look at this. Roasted, salted, organic cashews. If I'm going to eat nuts, it's going to be cashews. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you this. Oh, wait a minute. Where did I put this? In the fridge. Wait, 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 wait. I already had some of this. It's this chocolate almonds and sea salt yeah dark chocolate there's the almonds there's a the sea salt on top of the almonds and then i gotta show you the cutest card ever let me let me set this up look at this card this looks just like me on the front of the card that's what she says when i think of great brothers and there's me right there I immediately think of you. Oh, that is so sweet. It's not over. You open the card. And how lucky you are to have a great sister like me. Oh, look, you open the card, and you think the puppy's all by himself. Nope. He's got a supportive sister right behind him. Yeah. And happy birthday. Love, Kel, with two little hearts. Thank you, Kelly. That is so sweet. You're always behind me, I appreciate that. I don't know how you found a car that looks exactly like me, but you did, and uh, I love you too. Oh my word, I forgot to show you the greatest gift of all. Uh, Kelly sent me this as well. It's a whiskey glass, where do you see this? Here's what Kelly got me, look at this whiskey glass. Let me clear things off my kitchen. Our kitchen's a little bit of a mess right now. Yeah, there it is, re-elect Trump 2020. Make liberals cry again. Okay, you've seen that. So now, the opening rant. Um, you, you ever see athletes like come out onto the floor, or maybe people on the prices right? There, anybody where anybody who's standing in front of an audience, they 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 do this with their arms. They do this. They're they're trying to like get the audience up to a frenzy. Why we don't know. I saw a video recently of people ordinary citizens trying to make you know half court shots during halftime of uh you know national league basketball games and one idiot was out there trying to come on everybody cheer for me cheer for me cheer for me what's the matter don't you have it in you you need all this external noise where is your own drive where's your own desire to make it this is artificial it's almost like Jesus said, you know, if you want credit 
for everything that you do on this earth, for all the generosity you provide to people. If you're looking for credit, then you get your reward now. That's all the credit you're going to get. But, you know, do your work quietly. Don't let the right hand know what the left hand's doing. <laughs> Cheer for me. Oh, come on, come on. <sighs> they all, they, they want the crowd. I don't know why they would do it. They want the crowd whipped into a frenzy. It's always gonna, only going to make you more nervous, I would think. And who cares? What if they don't care? I would love it if somebody went like this and nobody made any noise whatsoever. It will serve you right if you think you could control a crowd. And besides, the adulation and the accolades of human beings today in Eon 3 before our glorification is worthless. But I know that the comedians, the rock stars, they get addicted on this immediate approval. I suppose in a smaller way, people on Facebook or um, whatever other social media things are out there, what, Instagram, this is what they want. They're, they're, they're trying to tell their people, come on, come on, raise up, raise the roof, I'm great, here's a picture of my dog, woo, 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 it's crazy. And then, this really gets me, I suppose this is a, a lead up to the main rant, you have these rock stars out there, and they're always saying this. Are you having a good time? I hate that. Are you having a good time? If they were having a good time, they would let you know they're having a good time. It doesn't matter. This is an artificial way for you, a rock star. I mean, I can sort of understand it if you're a uh, wannabe trying to make it. And, and you need the support. No, no, no. I can't even understand it then. Just play your music and let the chips fall. If people are having a good time, they will let you know. And why do you think that somebody having a good time would necessarily express it by making noise or clapping? I've had many good times that are dead quiet. It's dead quiet, but I'm having the best time of my life. And it's dead quiet. Senator, are you having a good time? I was before you asked me a stupid question. And before you assumed that the only way I could possibly be having a good time if, 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 is if I was <laughs> making all kinds of grotesque noises. I even saw Paul McCartney do this. You're having a good time. You're having a good time. You're Paul McFreaking Cartney. You're a beetle. You really still need, you still need this. You little baby boy, you still aren't satisfied with the crowd noise. The only reason you're asking them if they're having a good time, you really don't want to know if they're having a good time because you figure they're having a good time. They spent all this money. You're, you somehow perceive that the energy level of the audience has lapsed, not up to your beetle-like standards, and so you have to artificially induce it. You're a freaking beetle. You don't need it. Play your songs. In fact, Paul... I was at a Beatles tribute band concert up in Cleveland years ago. It was an excellent band, and I was sitting there mesmerized because it was so close to the Beatles. Fortunately, you know, I didn't have my glasses on. I couldn't see well, and I was kind of in the back, so it looked like the Beatles to me. Looked like the Beatles to me. And uh, me and my buddy were there with our girlfriends. This was back just after high school. And I am we're just, me and my buddy, his name's Scott, we're just agape. We're just like, we couldn't believe it. It was so great. And the girls afterwards says, oh, you guys didn't enjoy it. You were just sitting there. And we're like, what? We didn't enjoy it. We were hypnotized. We were mesmerized. We loved it. But there's this idea that um, unless you're jumping up and down and clapping, you know, like a teenage Beatlemania fan, then you're not enjoying it. I mean, I can just be sitting there just in awe of someone's talent. It's like you're staring at a Rembrandt or you're staring at a Picasso or a Pizarro or something, and you're just looking at it, and somebody comes up, are you having a good time? Or they come up, uh, you know, aren't you enjoying this? Don't you, don't you like this? What, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Leave me alone. I'm having a good time. I'm just not on a sugar high right now. Paul, really, Paul? Really, are you having a good time? Really? You and I in the body of Christ, we don't need this crap. We have the resolve within us to get through this eon. We don't need the adulation, the decibel level. We don't need decibel levels today to feel accepted, to feel good about ourselves, to keep us going. No, it can be dead quiet and we keep going because we have Christ within us. We have the Spirit of God within us, and it sustains us. 
You want to hear decibel levels? Wait till we're presented at the dais of Christ. We're not going to be standing at the dais of Christ going, are you having a good time? We're not going to be doing this at the dais of Christ. Come on, come on, all you celestial beings, clap for me. Oh, my God. Let God do it. <laughs> Let God provide the noise. You just stand there. Just stand there confident in Christ. Stand there today confident in Christ. Paul, stand on stage today confident that you're a freaking beetle. My God, we're members of the body of Christ. We're standing at the dais doing this? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't think so. All right, so here it is. I have a friend in prison, and he wanted to see pictures from the Hubble telescope. I said, hey, if you want to see pictures from the Hubble telescope, I will send you pictures from the Hubble telescope. Earlier, he wanted uh, motorcycle chicks in leather, so I found him photos of that. I do what I can. I'm a helpful sort. Now, so I said, okay, you want to see photos of the Hubble telescope? And I know that everybody is supposed to look at these photos of space from the Hubble telescope and be in awe. You are required to ooh and ah like fireworks on the 4th of July. But let me tell you, when I saw these photos of the Hubble, from the Hubble telescope, I got pissed. I got pissed. I don't, I don't, I, I can only just tell you my feelings and explain to you why I felt that way. To me, it is an insult to think that by looking up there into heaven, we are seeing any intimation whatsoever of our celestial home. My God, what you're seeing up there is a freaking junkyard. It's the leftover crap from the creation. It's black up there. I remember years ago, my wife looked up uh, at space and said, it looks so cold and dark up there. Why would I want to go up there? Great question. Because you're not going up there. You're going up, up there. You're going above the heavens into a celestial realm that to even compare it with the images from the Hubble telescope is a joke and it pisses me off. Now I'm going to show you the pictures I sent my friend. This is the first one. It's, I titled it Hubble One. Here is Hubble One. Showing it to you now. Um, I'm sorry, but this just looks like a bunch of messy clouds. Um, it looks like something that happened one time I left a empty pizza box on my stove and I turned on the wrong burner I tried to turn on the back burner but I turned on the front burner didn't realize it I went to the bathroom for a second I came back and the pizza box was on fire this kind of like what it looked like it looked like a pizza this, this looks like a pizza box fire the orange glow there at the bottom right is like the tomato sauce so, all right, not not impressed. Now we're gonna go to Hubble Two. This is Hubble Two. All right, this is Hubble Two. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, the other day I went to unclog my drain, my sink, and when the water went down, it kind of looked like this. It swirled just like this. Yeah, it swirled. And this looks like uh, powdered sugar or something. I don't know. Uh, it's just I'm. It's, this is. This is an intimation of my celestial home? Huh. <laughs> no. All right, here's uh, celestial image number three. All right. Yeah, celestial image number three. Uh, this is a mess. This is crap. This is space junk. This is left over from the disruption of the world or from the world, the creation of the world itself. Uh, this is like what a builder's workshop looks like on the floor when he's done. When he's done building a cabinet, this is this is the crap that's on the floor. This is the crap that's on the floor of a craftsman who's making a cabinet. These are the shavings. This is the sawdust. You see that crap at the bottom? That's sawdust. 
and the shiny stuff and that yeah that's pretty the sparkles yeah the sparkles are pretty but i can do that look watch look look i got a little beam coming off my head so ooh, look at that oh look at that i'm an image from the hubble telescope <laughs> oh my friend wanted a picture of a waterfall too so okay i'll show you the waterfall uh, the waterfall's a little better, actually. Hang on, there's the waterfall. Yeah, there's the waterfall. Actually, I'm a little more excited about the waterfall than I am about the images. This seems a little more organized to me than the wood, than the workshop floor, which is what you're seeing in the Hubble images. This is nice. Green is life. What I'm seeing in those Hubble photos, nothing to do with life, really. You got nice water coming down. Shh looks refreshing to me i mean i don't think any of it is quite as good as the motorcycle chicks but this celestial stuff ladies and gentlemen when you look up you're not seeing our home our home is to those photos what a beautifully finished kitchen cabinet is to the sawdust and wood chips and dust on the floor when the craftsman is finish, finished. You, what you are seeing in the visible universe, even the visible universe that's available by means of our most powerful telescopes, you are seeing a junkyard. You are seeing a celestial scrap heap you're seeing the floor of the workshop after the craftsman is finished. My God. I will admit to you that even God's crap is pretty. The waterfall's pretty. I had a friend named Herb Dirks, German guy, survived World War II. As an enemy of the Russians, he was a POW, crusty guy. He was a freaking Nazi back in the day. Got to forgive him for that. Somebody mentioned how beautiful the Rocky Mountains were. Or somebody went on a trip to the Appalachians and showed Herb a picture of the Appalachian Mountains. That was a big mistake. That was a big mistake to show Herb Dirks a picture of the Appalachian Mountains. He looked at that with his crusty German visage and he said... It's the disruption of the world. This is the result of the disruption of the world. <laughs> he, he just saw a scrap heap. He just saw a fractured planet. He just saw leftover crap from the disruption, or could be from the flood of Noah. And I laughed when he did this. This was 25 years ago. I laughed. It was so funny. But then I had to contribute something to the conversation. I said, well, yeah, you got to admit, though, even God makes the crap look look pretty. Herb gave me that look like, how dare you contradict me? I'm not contradicting you. I'm just adding to the conversation. I agree with you. This is the scrap heap. This is the junkyard. But God does make even the junkyard look good. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Oh, he hated to admit that. I suppose you're right. Huh? Ooh, huh. But... Good old Herb Dirks. Yes. I'll finish with this tomorrow, Romans 11. When we see what God has in store for us, I am talking beauty unimaginable. I don't think you can even compare a kitchen cabinet to it, really. We're talking about cities. We're talking about buildings. We're talking about avenues. We're talking about ports of travel we are talking about highways and byways the likes of which we have never seen capitals governorships sectors several of us will meet in sector 62 as i've been telling you and i has not seen nor ear heard what god has prepared for us. Yeah.